Hey guys, this is Crazy Sean DX, and welcome to another rendition of Praise Appraisal, where I determine if something is worth the praise or not worth the craze. Hey Ma, can we get WWE All Stars? We have All Stars at home. It's on your left. Ma, did the store man trick you again? Don't doubt my senses, young man. Bitch, I'm 31 and a half colitis. Last year, WWE had their yearly video game release in WWE 2K20. Given the situation with how main developers Ukes left the project and 2K own devs' visual concepts had to take over and start from scratch, we all knew the game was going to be bad. We just somehow managed to still underestimate how bad it really was, as it was broken, glitchy, crashed a lot, the rock looked terrible, there was no 1998 variation of Kane, which was apparently the biggest problem to some people, but 2K did own up and said that they would do their best to fix the game. At least until March of 2020, when the game's final DLC pack was released. Sounds like 2K alright? As a result of the negative reception and the pandemic going on, WWE 2K21 was cancelled, and yet NBA 2K21 came out just fine. It's a terrible game, but it still came out and got a next-gen version, while WWE 2K21 didn't even get to exist. Kinda like when the PS4 and Xbox One debuted and 2K shutting down led to WWE 14 becoming 2K14 and releasing only on PS3 and 360. You know, I think I'm starting to sense a pattern here. However, since WWE wants a yearly release regardless of what happens, which is also why 2K couldn't just skip a year, and also like with 2K14, 2K decided to have Saber Interactive make a wrestling game like the way 2K Playgrounds is to the NBA 2K games and WWE 2K Battlegrounds. It is clearly meant to be a spiritual successor to WWE All-Stars, a game that I genuinely adore and have even reviewed in late 2019, but it's very clear that none of the original devs were even asked to oversee production for it and give advice. How's that Metacritic for- Oh, you can't be serious again, man! Well, let's just do this. This is, uh, WWE 2K Battlegrounds. This isn't the best way to start this off, but I think I'm one of the few people in existence that actually like this game? It's not the same quality of All-Stars, but it helps scratch the edge of a newer game with said formula fine. Hell, playing it on the go on the Switch is pretty great, too. I really do like the gameplay feel here. It's arcadey over the top with a number of moves, but I think the much bigger roster are hurt in some areas. First off, they promise to have wrestlers added in over time and update patches such as Macho Man Randy Savage, who isn't supposed to flip during his entrance, Kane, who does not show off his muscles during his entrance either, and Sting. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 Sting? Sting? Even though he's under contract with the goddamn W? Actually, the same goes for Jake Roberts, who's in the base game, alongside Eric Rowan, now Eric Redbeard on the indies, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows, currently known as Doc Gallows in Impact Wrestling most of whom, of course, were fired by WWE just last year, before the game was even released. You know, I get the games are always outdated upon release, but they're so outdated that they put Sting in as post-launch content? Not to mention that it was believed for a bit that guys like Akam and Razor of AOP, as well as Curtis Axel, would be removed due to set firings, which is why I got pissed when I saw that they put freaking Rod Gronkowski, aka the, uh, the Gronk, into the game, even though he's been gone from WWE because he was too scared to take a fall onto a crowd of people, which I don't blame him for, by the way, and the cover star of NBA 2K21 and Damian Lillard, renamed Laheem Lillard. Laheem Lillard, a basketball star, a fucking basketball guy, in a goddamn wrestling game! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it turns out the guy is apparently a wrestling fan, and that's allegedly why he was put in the game, but let's be real here. This was done to promote NBA 2K21, because the game is complete and utter garbage. Well, for starters, they decided to put in power-ups, from health recovery to increased damage and strikes to... Becoming Colossus from the Deadpool movies, apparently. You only start out with three, however, and you have to unlock the rest through the campaign mode of the game. Where you can also unlock wrestlers that are only exclusive to unlock through said campaign. It's admittedly a neat incentive to actually play the campaign, even if everything is sold via comic book panels likely to avoid costs. I will say that I won't be covering the campaign story in this video much, but only because I haven't even beaten the campaign on any of the platforms I own the game on. That's right, I bought multiple copies of the game because I love All-Stars and don't want to deal with it being delisted should WWE get rid of 2K and have someone else do the licensing. And each version is a digital deluxe edition, which means that I... would have paid at least $150 on this game, but the Xbox One version happened to be on sale, so it was technically about $125. I clearly have nothing better to spend this money on. Oh, that must be my eviction notice. Just to give a short preview of the campaign, Paul Heyman basically asks Vince to start a new division in WWE and Vince is like, I'm too rich to care, fuck off. 
and Paul gets Stone Cold Steve Austin to do recruiting, most of them being a specific wrestling class to give the player a decent feel of how each fighting style works. Though before I get into that, no, making fun of how greedy and cheap Vince McMahon is does not automatically make it better. It just means you're rubbing it in our faces. Like that such good shit line used during the Firefly Funhouse match at WrestleMania 36 that also managed to get a shirt! They knew what they were doing! By the way, there are 118 matches slash events to go through and all, but you only need to do 49 to beat the campaign. So that's the thing you know now. As for the fighting styles, well, there's not much different from each other, it feels. Technicians and high flyers can dive outside of the ring, though high flyers apparently needed a patch for that, and that's honestly all that's really different to decipher the movesets. Though they did things a bit differently with how it works compared to All Stars, and it's more about varying stats for each wrestler. That overall number you see on the selection screen? Yeah, that's not an overall stat number like usual. That's how good their health is in contrast to their fighting style. Not to mention there's a carry system that determines who you can carry based on your fighting style. For example, powerhouses can carry anyone, have the best health, but run slowly, while high flyers have the least health, run fast, and can only carry high flyers and whatever is a class above them. I still don't know if it's a brawler, technician, or all-rounder, but this is why Apollo Crews, a high flyer in the game, despite being a bit heavy for himself, you know, because muscles, is apparently able to be lifted by my call, who is also a high flyer. Yeah, that, that checks out, I guess. Speaking of calls, let's check out the Creator Wrestler section. Got my guy's visuals made, and he'll be a high flyer. I cannot wait to use something like Ricochet's 630 Centon as a no, you freaking kidding me! What the hell is this? Only two selections for both signatures and finishers? Hell, Technician's got the shorter end of the stick as you're stuck with just a Styles Clash, and that's it. Meanwhile, all rounders and brawlers get three each and powerhouses get four. What the hell is this nonsense? Not to mention that they're all locked to set classes, so if you wanted to be a brawler that uses a coup de gras, or a technician that uses a double arm DDT, you're shit out of luck. I even emailed 2K support about this. I'm that adamant about this being fixed. I know nothing will come of it, but it never hurts to try. With all that said, I don't really see anything bad about the game necessary. Honestly, I'm hello, what's this? An in-game store? Showing in-game currency with... Oh no. No, 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 you can't do this, you can't just do this, you, got, you just don't, you can't do, please don't do this, don't even start the song! Yeah, despite 2K saying they'd never monetize the WWE game, at least according to us, what I've heard, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments on that, they, uh, they monetize the WWE game. Oh, but it's different because it's a spin-off, which is more like PISS OFF 2K! So, most of the game's content, if not all of it, is unlocked through in-game currency in Battle Bucks. And usually a lot of them. Quite a lot of them. Battle Bucks are also used to improve power-ups in the game and to improve your cost stats if you don't want to do the Battleground Challenge. In which, if you've already improved stats for them, you can make back a measly 100 Battle Bucks per stat boost, even if it costs more to improve the stat in the first place. Hell, each wrestler is set to a specific rarity that determines how much they cost, and because they had to go there, they offered a more, uh, faster option in using Golden Bucks, which can only be gotten with real goddamn money. Look, I get it, microtransactions are a thing in gaming that won't go away, and is here to stay, and it has its place in gaming. But there are genuinely better ways to do this. Obviously, mobile gaming uses it so the games can be free to play, but there's still the fact that most of them are predatory as fuck. Hell, the only good ones I can think of are with Devil May Cry 5 and Pokemon Rumble World. In Devil May Cry 5's case, for example, there are special taunts you can unlock by paying 3 million red orbs, a decision that was heavily criticized by people since the Steam version offers you the option to buy red orbs, with 1 million usually going for $20, meaning you'd have to spend, if I'm not mistaken, a total of $240 to get the special taunts for all four characters if you didn't want to wait that long. Capcom eventually made up for it by including an option to buy them for an overall total of $8, which, for a one-time unlock, is not a bad deal. At least it isn't like in the WWE games where you get the option to buy the accelerator to unlock everything, but when you buy it and once it's installed, everything is just handed to you automatically, because back in the day they gave you the option to unlock everything if you bought it so you could just go and unlock some stuff on your own to actually feel like you earned it! <laughs> I was that pissed off about it that I had to do it all in one breath. The other example in Pokemon Rumble World? You can only spend a maximum of $30 on Poké Diamonds in the game. Once you've hit that amount spent, you get a digging machine that nets you a set amount of Poké Diamonds daily to the point that they've even made a physical version of the game for 30 bucks with the Pokédime is automatically included as part of it. So good luck finding a new and untouched copy for that one, eh? I know I'll try, though. 
Here in 2K Battlegrounds, though, it's neither of that, and it's just forcing people to give in to temptation a la Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. So, I hereby decree that any game with microtransactions as predatory as this will automatically get 5% removed from the gameplay score, because NTX like this is somehow set around gameplay progression. Hey, it's better than when I plan to take a full 20% off the overall percentage when I plan to look at the Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel last year. Even then, how much praise do I think this is even worth? Honestly, I do like this game and play it a decent amount across the three platforms I got it on. However, as fun as it was, it still has that modern WWE gaming trope of bugginess that they've sadly been known for. If you can get past that, however, there's fun to be had with it. Personally though, it does not hold a candle to WWE All-Stars, but at least I can always go back to that game whenever I want to. Hey Ma, can we get God of War or do we have that at home too? It's on your right! Hey Ma, have you ever thought about laser eye surgery? Why? Because not to disrespect, but your vision is fucking shit! Hey guys, I truly appreciate your patience for this video to come out. The holiday rush was just awful, among other things. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you liked it, please click the like button to show your support, subscribe for more, and click the bell for notifications of when I upload. Do you like Devil May Cry 2? If you do, well, something's clearly wrong with you, but I even did a video on it to show how bad it is, which is available for you to watch either in the description below or as an end card for you to enjoy. Anyway, take care, be safe, black lives matter, love is love, and please remember to stay awesome. Bye-bye now.